Well, then, then you get on the Shannon Sharp now. Uh, hey. <laughs> Oh, you on that? So you are you the, are you saying is Devin Hester telling me he the goat? Most definitely. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice? Got to roll the dice. That's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice? Got to roll the dice. That's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another edition of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp, also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. The guy that's stopping by for conversation and a drink today is a three-time special teams player of the year. He's three-time first-team All-Pro, made four Pro Bowls. He's also a member of the 2000s and 2010 All-Decade team. There are not very many of those guys. He's also a member of the 100th anniversary teams, which means he's one of the 100 greatest players in NFL history of the 20,000 plus players that's ever played. 100 greatest Bears of all time, University of Miami Sports Hall of Famer, Hurricane Hester. Anytime, the Windy City Flyer, Devin Hester. Dev, what's up, bro? What's up, baby, man? I'm hanging in there. How about yourself? Man, I'm great. Man, all the, I mean, when you hear me reading out our special teams and the All-Pro and the All-Decades two times, there are not very many of those guys. A hundred, the 100th anniversary team. When you hear all these accolades, what do you think? Man, it's just, to be honest, a great career by a football player. You know, from high school all the way up to college and then in the pros, you know what I mean? Those are type of stats and statistics that a football player dream and love to uh, accomplish once they, they, they finish their career. Right. Congratulations on being nominated in your first year of eligibility for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What would it mean for Devin Hester, a returner, basically a special teams player? Because there are not very many, if I'm not mistaken. Morton Anderson, Ray Guy, Jan Stenerud, George Blanda, who started a part. He was a kicker and a quarterback. But you were primary a returner. What would it mean for Devin Hester to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility? Yeah, it, it would, to be honest, man, it would mean a lot to me, man. This is... is something that um we're just not talking about an award that anybody gets right um when you talk about the hall of fame man this is the greatest among greatest this right. is like when you go back to the ancient day you talk about achilles troy the greek gods like those names are among all the warriors yep. that that was fighting you know so in this situation when it comes to football man the hall of fame is every dream come true for a kid man and for me to make it man it really not only for me to make it, but to open up the doors. Because if I do make it, and when I do make it, I would be the first one as a kickoff and punt returner right. that, that makes the Hall of Fame. So for me, that's very special um, to open up doors for the younger ones coming up, but not only for myself, but to put a chair on top of my career, man. You mentioned if you play football, the Pro Football Hall of Fame is the football heaven. It's football mecca. That's where all the greats go. That's their final. That's their final uh, accolade. That's their final accomplishment. That's the, as you mentioned, the cherry on the top. There is no greater than that. And so, you know, they mentioned, you know, Pro Bowl player and they mentioned Super Bowl. But when they say Devin Hester, Pro Football Hall of Famer, there is no. There are only a, there are less than 400 gold jackets out there. There are about 25,000 Super Bowl rings out there. There are only about 400 gold jackets. Right. That's, that's that's a lot, man. You know what I mean? That's like being in the field, you know what I mean? In the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> it's only two or three doctors that, that run that, that, that hospital, man. Right. So you get that name doctor behind your name, man. It speaks for itself. When I mention returners, they've been some all-time great returners. We can go back to Gail Sayers, who played with the Bears. We go Billy White Shoes, Johnson Rick, Upchurch, Deion Sanders, Joshua Cribs, Dante Hall, Brian Mitchell, Mel Gray, uh, Eric Metcalf. Where does Devin Hester rank? Man, to be honest, man, we, we to be honest, we ain't all no we, know, man. Ain't no we. I'm talking to you. I, I ain't talking to them. I'm talking to you. Well, let me, let me get on the Shannon Sharp. Uh, oh. Hey. <laughs> oh, you on that? So you, are, you the, are you saying, is Devin Hester telling me he the GOAT? Most definitely. Well, that's what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. Oh, yeah. 
I am, and I, I honestly believe so. You know, when you look at the stats, right? You look at the touchdown. Yes, the things that I did has has never been done before. Right, never in, in the National League football, and um, the position that I play, I took I, I took it at another level. Right, you know what I mean. And to be honest, it's when you when it's time to pick a returner, I do believe I should be the first one when it's time. Pull no kick return. It doesn't matter. If you're returning the ball, Devin Hester's name should be called first. Most definitely. 100%. I, I truly believe that. And I know that everybody that knows the game of football and love football, you know, when they mention the best kickoff and punt returner, if you're a real, true football player, <laughs> you don't say Devin Hester. <laughs> when I look at your record, you're the first and only player to return the opening kickoff in the Super Bowl for a touchdown. You broke the most touchdown, all-time return touchdowns. You broke Dion records in Atlanta. Most punt return touchdowns, 14. Most returns for TDs in a season, six. If I'm not mistaken, that was your rookie year. Did you expect to have, if, did you expect to have that kind of impact in your rookie season? No, nah, most definitely not. You know <laughs> what I mean? But I was, I was told coming out of college, right, right. that uh, from a couple coaches, right, Dad, listen, man, if you go to the NFL right now, you're just going to be a kickoff and punt return. Okay. I say, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go, but I'm going to be the best one to ever do it. And let me pick it back off of what you just said. You said that I broke the record for the most kickoff and punt return in a single season, my rookie year. I did. But my second year, I broke that record. Wow. So, oh, yeah. When, when you think back, you're going to hit. The coaches are telling you, yeah, you can come out, but you're only going to be a returner. Now, remind you, in college, you were mainly a DB. You played more defense right. than you played offense. What made you so confident that you could go to the NFL and have that level of success, considering that you were kind of like a jack? You played offense, you played defense, you returned to football. You weren't really a specialist on the offense or the defensive side. That's, that's something that was left up to the coaches, man. Like... I, I don't really like to talk about that topic because a lot of people don't know it. But my sophomore year, when um, well, really I started playing DB. Right. And I beat out the starting corner. Right. Late, late in the season, like five more games left, and ended up leading the team in picks. So made a parade Hall American and all that. Right. My sophomore year, so I, my junior came in and I was rated one of the top corners coming in the league in, right. the, in the season. Right. So, you know, you start getting all the accolades, the photo shoots in the magazine, start coming to right. the campus doing all this stuff. My D coordinator didn't like it. He was like, you know what I mean? You, you blowed up too quick. You're on the scene too fast. We're going to sit you down. So, what spring kind of ball, I got, knocked down to, I got knocked down to 13, man, spring ball, man. And I uh, approached him about the situation. Like, listen, I'm not that type of player that feed off all that, all the that accolades and all American and playable all American and all that. That's not what I want. I want to come in here and contribute as being one of the starting corners on this team and, and do my best. Right. And so I approached him about the situation and it didn't go the way that he wanted because he was like, I don't care what you're saying. Shit, we finna sit you down. There's too much spotlight on you. And I, I said that bullshit, you know what I mean? And I got up and walked out. He was like, that's all. He was like, and he called me and I didn't come back. And so he stuck his head out the door. He said, as long as you play here, you will never play another down for me as long as you play here. And I set the bench my whole junior year at Cone. So I just did kickoff and punt return. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be the best kickoff and punt return that is. So that where my cornerback career just pretty much ended, man. So that was one of the reasons you also left early. You're like, man, I got to get up out of here. I might do something bad to somebody because they mess, they, they trying to mess up my money. It, apparently that's what really happened, man. So I was like... I really just got drafted off my sophomore year, what I did my sophomore year when I did have the opportunity to play. Right. When you look at the way the game is shifted now, the rules that they've implemented, um, no more three-man wedges, no more two-man wedges, no more holding hands. You remember when you came in, you have three of those, you have three D tackles or, or two D tackles of the offensive lineman holding hands, and then here we come. We got a thousand pounds looking to blow somebody up. They're no longer oh, yeah. allowing you to do that, obviously, for concussions, for the health of the players now. Do you believe your records in the return game will be broken? I think from them just moving the kickoff up for it, you right. know what I mean, and, and allowing the kickers to uh, 
kick it deep in the end zone. Uh, when I when I was in the league, you know, after my third or fourth year, when they had the negotiation about changing the rules, right? Um, my special team coach, which is the best, I would say the best the best team coach in the NFL, which is Dave Toad, who was at Kansas City Chiefs right now. But he came, he brought it to my attention, like, hey, we getting ready to go to a meeting. They having a meeting about moving the kickoff up. Right. And so he was like, be ready for it. And so when he came back, he said, you know what? When we had the meeting out of 32 teams, everybody agreed on moving it up beside, beside me. And everybody said, well, we don't have no Devin Hester, so we want to move it up. Right. Is that and what- that's why they moved it up. That's if, why they moved it up, because every, every team voted to move it up. If you also remember, Devin, now they don't allow the guys. When I first came to the league playing special teams, the guys would get 10, 15 yards deep, get a running start. So when the kicker hit the uh -huh. ball, everybody's in a dead sprint. <laughs> so by the yeah. time the wall set up and they looked around, the guy was in his hip pocket running past him. And you right. also was one of those guys that said, your coach would tell you, I don't care how deep they kick it, bring it out. Come on. Take it out. <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> Take so it out. What does that mean? Because you see now, basically, if the ball two yards deep in the end zone, you see everybody's like, okay, we good. <laughs> we we straight. We, we, we ain't breaking out. You was like, hey, they already knew Devin Hester coming out with it. So, hey, they listen, can't kick it. Unless listen. they kicked it out of the end zone, you yeah. coming out with it. Hey, you know how the kickoff team, they get points for sprinting the end zone? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Every team we played, they were getting points because, listen, they had to sprint to that end zone because they knew I was coming out. <laughs> so <laughs> what would you say are, what's the best attribute to have if you are a returner? Is it speed? Is it vision? Is it quickness? Is it elusiveness? What's the number one thing you need? I would say it, it's hard to narrow it down to one. Okay. Because... You, know, you gotta have. You gotta have. Okay, give me your most so important. Okay, give me, give me the. Okay, if there's four or five of them, give me the the list of importance going one to five. So, what's the number one I thing you something. need? Vision. Okay, vision one. Vision. Two speed. Okay. And three, the heart of a lion. Okay. You know what I mean. A lot, a lot of people got speed. A lot of people got vision. But when it's time to hit that hole. Uh, hey. And you got a hundred people coming, and you look, and then you you looking up in the sky, yeah, and that ball no, hangs. For, <laughs> you, you got four or five seconds in your clock. You know what I mean? You got four or five seconds to catch the ball, and that ball hanging on six seconds. Uh, hey, you looking up? A lot you of people throw their hand up. They gonna throw exactly. their hand up. <laughs> you you have to go right. back. Yeah, and then you go back in the film room, and you put your hand on. You got the, the closest guy ten yards from you. Right? They're like, what you doing? Man, listen, that ball was hanging too long, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what was of your returns, what's, what was the return? Because I remember you played a game against the Broncos, and the Broncos were winning the entire game. They were dominating. And then all of a sudden, uh -huh. they made a mistake. And they kicked two right. of them to you. And you brought them both yeah. back. If you, can have, if you have a game, what's your favorite game in which you brought a punt back or a kick return back? I would say probably my rookie year, man, against Arizona. Okay. That's when Denny Green had the incident where he said they thought who he said it was. Oh, and he let him off the hook. You you made you made him say yeah, that was that was you that caused that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I caused a lot of things in the league, Shad. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, man, I, I would say that game because we went in that we went into the halftime down three to like twenty four, man. Right. Was beating our behind. You know what I mean? And then that's the time where that, that that 2006 season where we kind of depended on the defense and the special team right pretty much carried us all the way to the super bowl so offense was struggling and um them boys came out and had a great uh game plan and put 24 points up quick on us so we went in the half man and you know as um the, the veteran guys kind of brought all the guys up and said man listen we continue to fight man we got a special team here we continue to fight we're gonna we're gonna pull it out Man, the defense started clicking again, turn over left and right, and then shoot two minutes, two, three minutes left in the game. We down four or five points. It's a punt return call. So I'm looking like it's my time to put on the show now. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> so let's just say for the sake of argument, you're down, as you mentioned, you're down less than a touchdown. And you're like, man, we need a spark. Do you say to yourself subconsciously, I need to make it happen, or you just let it happen? You like, I just do my thing, just let it happen organically. Or are you telling yourself, I need to make a play here. 
no, I'm telling myself, I can't wait for something like this to happen. Right. I can't wait for us to be down four or five points <laughs> and we need a big point. I, I, I don't want to be blowing the team out. I want to be in a moment where I, I want to be that guy to say, boy, listen, we need a touchdown right now. We down, there's two minutes left to go in the game. Who we going to depend on? Right. Shoot, punt, turn, oh, yeah, we got this here. Right. That's the type of player I wanted to be my whole life. And I always looked at saying, listen, man, it's only two, three plays that I know as a kid that determines the outcome of the game. I want to make one of those plays. Right. When you go back and you're a returner and you play without pads, you had no thigh pads, you played with no knee pads. Why as a returner? I was a dog. I didn't care. I didn't care about getting hit. I I I just felt like I was Superman to be honest, man. I didn't I didn't fear nobody. Right. And I was the type of player where I would meme up the sideline and look at the coach like I dare you to kick it to me. <laughs> and before the ball is kicked, I'm on their sideline staring at them like I wish y'all would kick it to me. That's how much confidence I played with, man. And so your teammates know like it's one thing playing, you know, play play with a Hall of Fame quarterback, John Elway. I just knew I felt very comfortable on a given Sunday that hey we're gonna be okay when you are they have you as the returner they like mm-hmm. man we good if we can get these guys backed up knowing that he can't angle it he just got to get it out we got Devin Hester back there night night <laughs> night night like playing Mike Tyson in the prime night night coach Santa coach you don't you don't realize when teams did kick to me the ratio was every three kicks I touched, one I was going to the house. Right. I was that hot my first two years. Out of, out of three kicks, one I was guaranteed to go to the house. That was the ratio. Right. Just imagine if I got these team to kick me all 11 years of me playing. How, how my stats would be. It's crazy, man. You got to realize I had like seven, eight returns called back that don't even count in my stats. Right. Well, I was, well, listen, I was ready for them kickoff and punt returns. <laughs> so, if I said you could only choose one, kickoff or punt returns, which one would you choose? I like punt returns. Well, you I, like can, I can be myself. I can be myself, right? right. So kickoff returns, we all know sideline right, sideline left, or middle return. Right. So punt return, I can put a little, I can put a little uh, cranberry juice and a little uh, crystal hot sauce on that. You know right. what I mean? And do what I do. And right. then go back to the return. Right. So that was... That a- just... That just if, Let's just say for the sake of argument, Devin, they call we call a right return. And a lot of times, I don't know how you guys did it, but we would set up the return towards our sideline. Because if you set it up to right. their sideline, they're going to be calling it out. So we normally set the return up to our sideline, so it was going to be quiet. But mm-hmm. the returner, we never had a returner like you. Did you automatically mm-hmm. like, okay, we got a right return. I got to make sure I get to the right. Or you say, you know what? I'm going to trick them. I'm going to do a little dancing over here, pretend like I'm going to go left. I'm going to start left a little ways, knowing that you're going to get back to the right. Oh, yeah. See, the, when when me and Coach Day built a relationship where he really had confidence in me mm-hmm. and was able for me to voice my opinion, I say, listen, whenever you want a touchdown, just double the gunners. I don't give a damn about them fat boys up front. Right. Double the gun and let me get started. I'm going to do, do what I do. And let all the returns go to the field. You let all the returns go to the field, I'm going to find me a hole. Right. Because I'm going to create one. Right. Double the gunners. I don't care about no fat boy. Lead a punter and a lone snapper. Do not block them two. <laughs> That's a waste of a time. Do not block the lone snapper or the punter. Now we got extra guys blocking. So now that, you, now that you mentioned that, which is worse? Getting tackled by the long snapper or the punter or getting hauled? Which one is worse? Yes. Getting hauled. <laughs> <laughs> man, come on, getting man. Is worse than this. Listen, if you get hauled, you know, man, listen, that's that sticks. <laughs> that sticks for a person like a fat person. You can't get hauled. I don't care who it is. Right. So you say you, know, you can say the punter, punter. you can say the punter had the angle on me. He pushed me out of down, uh, out of bounds. He, he really didn't make the time. tackle. But what about the long snapper? Exactly. What about the long snapper? Long snapper tackle same, you. Same thing. He just he just gonna try to wall you and push you out of bounds. Ain't nobody tackling you. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just gonna play the angle. You know what I mean? And hope somebody hurry up and come before I run past them. So what was your thought? You get a kicker. You slate. Let's just say you're five yards away from the kicker. 
What's going through your mind? Are you like, okay, I'm going to stutter him. I'm going to play it to the field and come back to the sideline. What's your thought process? How are you setting him up? I'm finna eat this ground up. <laughs> I'm, finna eat this, I'm finna eat this cushion up. Because when I get up on him so fast, he's just going to sit right there. Right. He's going to sit. Now, like a lot of a lot of speed guys, they try to take an angle too early. No, I'm eating up his cushion. Right. I'm trying to get – I'm trying to – So, in other words, you, you, you keeping that straight stem. You keep it right at him. I'm going to go right at him. Straight at him. So, I get about two or three yards from him, then I'm – Stick one way and I'm out of that because he gonna sit. <laughs> he might sit down. I don't had a couple points of color. I get up on him. They sit right down on their butt. Uh, can't go nowhere. I mean, if you think about it, teams not kicking. You mentioned teams that wouldn't kick you the football. We had the Jordan rule. They have the book came out. They would walk Barry Bonds. Back, you know, Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. We got to keep those guys on the sideline. And make sure they don't have the ball. Think about it. Team said we are not kicking the ball to Devin Hester. We either kick it out of bounds or he's not touching the ball. So we take the penalty as opposed to kicking it to Devin Hester on the kickoff or we just going to put it out of bounds. Forget that, hanging it up there for four or five seconds. No. Put it out of bounds, kick it out of bounds. Most definitely, man. You know, we even made commercials in Chicago. <laughs> I'm kicking the ball in the late, Michigan late. You got boats out there waiting on the ball to come. Like, we knew what teams were getting, man. Like, I even had punters come up to me. Before the game, doing pregame warm up, like man, you finna mess my stats up today. <laughs> I was averaging forty eight yards a punt. Now I'm finna drop to thirty two because I got to kick the ball out of bounds twenty yards. Right. <laughs> when so, yeah, man. So you returner, you could play DB in college. You played a little wide receiver, and then you kind of transition. Says I want more. This yeah, I, I love returning punts and kick, but I believe I can do a little bit more on offense. What made you come to that decision that says, I want to do more? It, it was because I wanted to be honest. Coach Lovett brought that to my attention the minute they started kicking away from me. And he was like, Devin, to be honest with you, man, you're probably and it got to be in the top two, top three, most dynamic player with the ball in your hand in the National Football League. Right. Now teams are kicking it out of bounds. I got to find a way to get the ball in your hands. So the only way I can do that is to move you over the offense. Right. And that's why I got to move over the offense because the punters and the team started kicking the ball to me. If they would have kept kicking to me, I'd have just been, I would probably stay that corner and been playing this straight punt turn, kickoff turn. Right. But it also helped the contract because you say, look, hey, I'm not just a returner. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, I'm on the offense oh, yeah. too now. So, hey, y'all need, hey, need to factor that into that contract also. That, that's when I got that contract, when they <laughs> moved me over the offense. <laughs> Let's go back to you. Let's go back to you, your younger years. You grew up in Florida. You lost your father uh -huh. to cancer. Your mom was seriously injured in an automobile accident. So was football was force an outlet for you to deal with the pain and the trauma that you were going through as a, as, as a uh, young man? I would say so, man. Like, to be honest, I, I got attached to a guy named by the name of Mr. Thompson at first, which was uh, he worked at a boys girl club. Okay. The boys girl club was living right across the street from me. Okay. They knew my situation, right? So they knew my situation with my mom. They knew my 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 father passed when I was young. So we didn't have to pay to go. So right, we just jumped the gate and we just blend in with the rest of the kids. And so we played football and all that from the moment we got out of school to to it was time to go to sleep. You know, so. The passion of football, man, in the neighborhood I grew up in, that's all we did. Right. That's also that's all I knew was football. Football and all we did was football, play football, and went outside and flip, back right. flips and all that type <laughs> of stuff. Right. <laughs> so obviously you're a great high school player. You get an opportunity to go to the U. I'm sure you had other opportunities. What made you decide to go to the University of Miami? Man, a lot of people that was in my situation where your mama made you go. My mama made me go to Miami. You know what I mean? It was a couple of schools I wanted to go to, but my right. mama was like, listen here, we ain't got no money for no flights. We ain't got no money for no no traveling. And then plus my brother played at FIU. Right. So FIU is like a 10-minute drive from my campus. So we was able to be close to each other. Me and my brother was able to be close to each other. And then, you know, at the same time, there was a winning program. And like I said, there was ranked in the top three, top four in the nation. So at the end of the day, man, it was, it was a great decision. I feel that, you know, me being close to home and being close to everybody. So that was the reason why I went to the U. 
you said there are other schools that you wanted to go to. What were some of the schools that Devin Hester wanted to go to, wanted to attend? I wanted to go to either NC State at the time. They had Phillip Rivers. Right. And they were at the time, they were ranked like in the top 14, 15 in the nation. And I knew I was going to come in right there and play right away. Right. I knew that. You know what I mean? That was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a thought about that. You know, going to like Miami and stuff like that, you know, with those type of guys, you're going to have to sit out a year. <laughs> it ain't number five star players in that locker room. You know what I mean? Right. So, to go to a top 15 ranked team, they just lost a position that you coming in to fill in and right. be that main guy. And they already told me, listen, you can't hear your brother coming. We, we y'all good. So I wanted to go to I wanted to go to NC State. That was my number one school. But at in Miami, Miami offered me like a, when I was a freshman in high school, man. So I felt like I had to kind of be loyal to those guys. And I had a cousin that played for them too. So right. it was in my blood to go there though. There's a story, and you can ex- expand on this, that you had to sit out uh-huh. your first year at the University of Miami because they believed you didn't take the SAT. Tell right. the story. So that story went down like, you know, like, when you start getting notarized, right, you, okay, you that, that, that athlete that say, oh, wow, this kid here got potential. Right. They start making you take the SAT early. You don't wait till your senior year. Right. right? So... I started doing the prep of my sophomore year, took the test my junior year. Right. Got a score qualified, GPA, everything qualified. So my whole senior year, now all I had to do was just work on my GPA, all my test scores and everything was done. I didn't right. worry about taking I didn't take no SAT or nothing my whole senior year. Right. Got my test scores back and everything. So if you if your SAT get questioned, I don't know if y'all know this, but if your SAT score get questioned, you do not get it back. Right. They send you a letter in the middle say, we found some unspecious things going on, we right. want you to retake it. I got my SAT scores back. Right. So my whole senior year, I was qualified. Right. GPA was like a, a 3.1, 3.1, 3.2. So I was good. Just no, no, no worry about no school or nothing. So on my college visit, um, I don't know if you know that story, but the only school that then offered me a scholarship was SC. That's the only school I never I got never got a four ride. Everybody else I could have went to. Right. Um, uh, so I went on a college visit and um one of the coaches wanted me real bad. So I promised him I would take a, a, a visit, you know, because right. you get five visits. So I promised I would take a visit there, you know, and visit him and really give him a shot because he really was trying hard to get me. And then um, when that time got close to uh, announce where I was going, I said, Coach, you know, I say out of all the recruiters, you know what I mean? You was the one that was there really, really working hard to get me. I appreciate your situation and what you were trying to do, but I'm going to go ahead and sign with University of Miami. So... He got upset. He started calling my phone every every two hours, going off. So I said, you know what? This is getting out of hand. I'm going to let you deal with my parents. Because at first, I was dealing with him. I ain't tell my mom about it. I was right. dealing with him. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and let my mom deal with this situation. So my mom got the phone. She went off on him. And he called one more time. I answered the phone. He said, you know what? If you don't come here, I promise you, you will never see a down of football in your life. So that's when I said, man, you threatening me. So we, I hung up on him. We blocked his phone and all that. I get to the University of Miami after signing with him. I check in the dorm room. Everything, I'm good, everything. Um, The next day for practice, my counselor come to me. He said, Devin, we got a problem. I said, what's going on? He said, some 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 stuff going on with the NCAA about you. There's nothing. You shouldn't have to worry about nothing. You good. And so they, uh, when I got down there, we got on the phone with the NCAA. They said it's been some, some phone calls about questioning your SAT scores. And I said, okay, well, what's the problem? They said, well, your answers match somebody that's sitting beside your answers. And I said, well, what did they get? And they had like a, I think they scored like an 880. Mm-hmm. I said, well, what did I get? I think I scored like a 970. Right. So I said, well, who was cheating on who paper then? <laughs> if he scored an 880, I scored a 970. My score is higher than his. Who, who y'all think cheating? They said, they feel like you were cheating. So it was up to University of Miami to say, you know what, we're going to disregard that. And because it was up to University of Miami to say, we're going to set these scores whether or not or not. Because right now, y'all don't have right. no proven fact. So Miami was at the point where they, when they went to the national championship in Ohio State and they lost in Ohio State. So if I would have played that year and they would have kept investigating, if they would have found something that was out of the ordinary, Miami would have been suspended. Right. So Miami said, you know what, we 
can take a risk and just let you play, and then week six or seven, they come back and say it's not right, or we can sit you out and then you just come back in next year and play. And so when that happened, I had a bunch of teams like, listen, we 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 already dug into that that situation. We ready to take it. it it's nothing they can do about that situation. Okay. You got your scores, you score higher than that person. It's nothing they can do about it. But Miami said, no, we're not going to do it. And then they was like, and I told them about the situation. And they were like, listen, Dad, we just got too much to lose. Um, I will promise you this. If you if you, if you you just have faith in us next year and you come in, we will not give your jersey away. So they set my jersey number four up because everybody was trying to get it. They said, no, we're not going to hand out the jersey. We're going to show him that we're lower and we'll bring him in next year. And that's what happened. So that was, you believe that that coach at the, or the recruit at the university, at, at USC, you believe he had something to do with this? No, no, not not USC because USC didn't recruit him. Okay, USC never. They USC was the only school that didn't offer me a full scholarship okay. out of all the colleges. Was the only school, but it was a college that I was, you know, getting recruited by. Right. Recruited you don't. By. You don't. You don't want to reveal that yeah, college. Man. You You've been sitting nah, on that. You. I'm oh, good, man. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. I'm just gonna let that go. I did. I I went my first time touching the ball in Orange Bowl. I took it 92 yards back for a touchdown. Right. Mm -hmm. I took my helmet off, stared in the camera, right? I just wanted him to look me in my face. That's all. That's why I did that. If you if you go back, my first time touching the ball in the Orange Bowl, I took a 92-yard kickoff back, open the kickoff for the game. Yep. I took my helmet off, going in the end zone, looking, at, looking in the camera, stared at him, just so he could see my face. That's how I got him back, though. So we good now. You didn't play your entire – you didn't – so you weren't allowed to practice. Were you allowed to meet? Were you allowed to go in the cafeteria with the play? How did you stay in shape? So basically, you were like a just regular college student. I didn't even go to school. I didn't even go to school, man. I went home. Wow. I went home, man. I went home, man. Listen, that that drive home, man, felt like I was getting sentenced to 15 to 20 years in prison, man. Right. Like, I, it was like my whole life was just gone. And it was like, it ain't nothing I can do about it, man. When I pulled up to my driveway, man, and looked at the front door and just thought about, like, man, everybody that come from this era, if you don't go to college, man, you know what's finna happen to you. Mm -hmm. You finna get caught up. Right. You finna get caught up, man, and just looking at that door, I said, boy, it's over for me. So I literally, like, I literally, like, when I got in that, when I, once I walked through that door, man, I went to my room, closed the door, I... I don't think I ate. Uh, I don't think I ate or slept for like two, three weeks straight. I did not come out the room for a whole month. My mama made me feel like that. You gotta get up, man. You gotta get up, baby. You can't do this. You cannot do this. You gotta fight, man. Like I literally, I stayed in the room for two, three weeks straight without eating, and then come out the room for a whole month. I was sick, man. Like everything I worked for got taken away just out like that. That easy, right? I was hurting, man. So your mom said, Deb, you gotta you you can't just give up. You gotta yeah, fight. So once she tells yeah. you that, now what's going, what's what's your thought process? I gotta train. I gotta make sure that when I go back, I'm in shape, I'm ready to go. To say, let them know that I haven't been just sitting around. Right. So what happened was my mom called the high my high school coach and was like, Man, y'all gotta find something for Deb to do till it's time for them to go back. So my coach, man, he was like, Hey man, listen. We need to work. You say, bring you so I kept everything. Bring you so the fast and you help me and come practice with us. You give us work. And while you giving us work, you're gonna get to keep yourself in shape. So I I started going back to my high school and being on the scout team to make those guys better, man. And not only did I make them better, I was able to stay in shape. Right. And that's how I really stayed in shape, man. I went back to high school, man, after graduate and went back practicing with them being on the scout team, man. So what's the best feeling? Punt return touchdown, kick return touchdown, interception, rushing touchdown, receiving touchdown. But I say, David, this this is what you this is this is one. You will have one of these today. Which one you want? Punt return. Punt return. <laughs> punt return touchdown. That's your that that's your that's your bag. The punt return TD. Yeah, yeah. Punt return touchdown, man. Because you know, innocent, you can pick 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 it and run 12, 13 yards in the end zone. But punt right. return, man. You out there in the middle of nowhere by yourself. And when that ball get in your hand, there's a thousand people around you. And when you come up out that hole and you hit that sideline, and then you show them folks how really fast you will, and you open up while right. somebody's sitting up in the high stand, and they see how fast you really running, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> that's what I like to show. <laughs> you told the story earlier about how you didn't get an opportunity to play much your junior year on the defensive side of football. You were mainly a returner. Uh, because the coach didn't like some of the things that had transpired your sophomore year with the accolades that you had, start, the, you had started to receive. So you make the decision that you're going to come out. You go to the combine, you run 4-4 and some Nike Air Max, and you pull a hamstring. You're like, damn, yeah. of all the things that could have happened. I didn't really play, didn't yeah. really play, de de I didn't play at all on the defensive side of football, and now here I am at the combine, and I pull up. No, no, I, pull, I pulled up. I had a poor hamstring going into the oh, combine. Okay. So that's why I wasn't supposed to run. Right. That's why I didn't bring no cleats. Okay. Right. Because I want I told him that, you know, you run. my okay. pro days in two weeks. My pro days in two weeks, man. I just tweaked my hammy, man. I'm not ready to run. And when I got aboard the press conference, and you know, we had I had my interview with all the teams. And um the biggest thing with me was what is he gonna run in the 40? That was my biggest that was everybody wanted to really see me going into the draft. Right. Was how fast this really this kid is really is. And so when I told them I wasn't running at the combine, boy, it got so quiet in there. They're like, but this is not this is not good news. So <laughs> after leaving the press conference, my agent blowing me up. He said, Listen, man, I don't know what you're gonna do, but listen, these folks wanna see you run, man. I don't I know I don't know how bad it is, but listen. Just do it. So I say, you know what? All right, I'm gonna just I'm gonna have to just come out, come out slow and just roll into it. Right. And that's what I did. I came out slow and rolled into it and just tried to kick it at the end. And I ended up running like four four flat. And then two weeks later, I ended up running a four two sun at the pro day. So right. I was able to make it up. So if you if you had run at the combine and Devin Hester is fully healthy, how fast do you believe you ran that 40 that day? Oh, any bit of four two. Any bit of four two. So if I take De if I if I take Devin Hester at his prime and I take Tyreek oh, yeah. at his prime, who went in the forty? Man, Tyreek ran what four three side. Four, See, Tyreek is a track guy. Yeah, he a track guy, right? I'm a foot. I got foot. I'm football speed. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't no track guy, but forty yard there. Yeah, man, listen, man, my I ran the fastest ten yard split in Miami history. I ran a one three four in a ten yard. My my freshman year, bro, they would not tell me my time in the forty because they said I was too young. I used DJ William, if you know DJ William. Yeah, I know. DJ. I was getting clock running the forty. They told me the time that I ran was never ran as a true freshman, so they did not tell me what my time was. I was running four three threes at a sophomore in high school at the Nike camp. Man, I knew I would have ran every bit of four four two. So you believe? So you believe in your prime? You to beat Tyreek in the forty? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, man. Ooh. That that'd have oh, been a yeah. right there. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, every bit of four two, man. So, you get to the league. Obviously, you wish you'd had uh, the situation now where you could have had any number you want through one through forty nine, because you'd have had number four and the Chicago number. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna get that four. <laughs> so your your, t your TD celebration. What goes into a debit? Because you did a, a lot of the celebration you did with Dion was the was the the imitation of Dion. What what right. made, what made you decide to do that day? Time with uh, Dion Sanders went to Florida State. Uh, the Seminoles. Right. You go to Florida. To you you got had some some serious that was a serious rival. Back in from the eighties mm -hmm. to the nineties, uh, y'all don't even really play each other. Both teams are falling on hard times now. So what made you decide to do that celebration? Man, D like. At the end of the day, like true fo Florida football players, we just respect the right. OGs that, that that play the game the right way. Okay. So Dion was a, a a a person that was from Florida that everybody respected, regardless of what team he went to. Um, Dion actually started mentoring me when I was in college. Okay. You know, like we we was texting back and forth when I was in college like, as a mentor. You know what I mean? So right. this wasn't something that, that happened once I got in the league. Right. My first part one touchdown, I, I was high step. <laughs> so this, this, this was my favorite player from, from part one. You right. know what I mean? So it was only, you know, only felt for me to continue to do it, man, because that's why I, I lied. That's why I wanted to be growing up. Obviously, you go to the Bears, your rookie year, they have an outstanding season, end up going to the Super Bowl. Did you when you're on that team and you're in training camp and you're going to the, through the season, did you think you guys had a Super Bowl caliber team? 
I would say we, we when we start feeling like that had to be like week eight, eight or nine. I think we had we we won in like week eight or nine. We were like eight and one. Mm -hmm. Like we were rolling defense. I never seen the NFL where at halftime the starting defense take out their shoulder pad. And it's a regular season game. Right. Now preseason I see it happen. Right. But regular season game, mm -hmm. and you putting up 48, 48 points on the team, 48 0, and at halftime, you taking all your shoulder pad, you knew you had something special. Did were you surprised that Coach Dungey kicked actually kicked you the ball in the Super Bowl knowing what you had done in the regular season? Were you like, I know, I know good and well they just didn't <laughs> kick me this ball. I, I think it was a, a pride thing with that situation. <laughs> I think they were just being proud for, you know, because it, it was in the paper all week. You know, my, uh, we read papers a lot about what teams going to do as far as kicking the ball because that was the, always the number one key to success of being the Bears was kicking, whether they're going to do, whether they're going to kick it or not. So we read the paper, papers the whole week. And, you know, like one day they'll say they're doing it, then the next day they say they decided not to, they didn't have a good day and practice on special teams. So leading up to the to the game, I'm apparently Coach Dunny got in the locker room and the players told him that, you know what I mean, if we don't kick it to him, you just if we don't kick it to them, you just telling us that you don't have faith in us. So they put his back against the so wall. So they gassed him up. So he didn't have Yeah, they gassed him up. I'm pre <laughs> I appreciate it though. <laughs> but after that I appreciate it. But after that, they didn't kick it to you again. No more, man. So no you you get the opening kickoff, you take it back. What's going through your mind? You like you? Not only we win this game, I'm gonna be the MVP. I just took the opening kickoff back. That ain't happened before. Ooh, I'm about because you know once you get that first one early, you thinking I might get two of these things. I might get three of these things. Man, listen, I had them got to the sideline and the little media do it. I say, how much is Disney paying for the MVP to come to Disney? <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to Disney World, shit. Hey, I start asking how much they paying for the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> so now, all of a sudden, they start kicking the ball away. So when teams would start kicking the ball away, did you get frustrated? How did you remain composed? Okay. Did, how did you remain like, well, and not force it? Because a lot of times, guys try to do too much. You see, all of a sudden, they start, they don't punt the ball to you, they don't kick the ball to you, and then all of a sudden, in a situation where you should fair catch it, or you should let the ball go into the end zone. You start to press, trying to do too much. Yeah, I did. I I, I went through that phase where I, I I started doing that, and I caused like one or two fumbles, mm -hmm. uh, one or two turnovers. You know what I mean? And then I got pulled to the side, and my coach was like, "Listen, man, you got to take what they give you. You cannot force nothing in the NFL because you're gonna cause us to lose a game." And that was hard for me because I'm used to, it, you know what I mean. These kick out these punts, man, and then all of a sudden, you know what I mean? You just take my game. I, I go in the locker room after the game more with a clean uniform on. I ain't like that. <laughs> I want to see some dirty things on my pants, man. So you end up transitioning. You doing some um, um, some wide receiver, doing your full time duties. How difficult was it, or were you getting some wide receiver? Because I'm assuming that on scout team you were a wide receiver because. You know, that's the way it normally works. Guys that are not starters, they give the, they're the show team or what we call the scout team for the starting offense or the starting defense. So did you, I'm assuming that you played wide receiver or were you playing defense uh, uh, on the scout team? Listen, San, Coach, San, you got to realize back in the day, I was I was Chicago secret weapon. So scout team was a way of me getting hurt. So when it when that temp you know I'm from Florida, so when that temperature dropped like 50 degrees <laughs> after team warm up, I'm in the bubble catching punts the whole price. What? And when that whistle, when that whistle blow, I come out there and we break it up, not go in the locker room. <laughs> that was oh hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Man, what kind of job you had? How you gonna how you gonna be in the bubble catching punts? Then they call you out there to catch punts, but when the special teams are up, and then you in the locker room. But listen, but listen, I was a secret weapon back in the day. Listen, <laughs> honest the truth. We man, do I, team warm up, team stretch. It, it once it hit fifty, once they break it up, the individual, me and like two other little equipment ball guys, we going straight to the bubble. And then he, they, we catch. I catch about two, three hundred punts. So and then I tell him, man, get listen, give me a heads up when fifteen men left over with price. 
They call, they call on the walker talk. Hey, we got 10 more minutes left. We start making our way back to the field. So that was, that, that was what you, man, you, you, so that's why you was fresh on Sunday. You ain't do nothing, you ain't do nothing but catch punts and kick off in the bubble and then, hey, come Sunday, your legs super duper fresh. Fresh, catching punts and doing them sit up, man, <laughs> in the bubble. <laughs> so, Deb, you, you mentioned, you mentioned your mom and I think you said you have, you have two other brothers, right? I got one, I got an older brother and younger sister. Oh, your older brother, younger sister. So you get this big yeah. contract. Obviously, coming from the situation, a lot of us professional athletes come from very similar, very, very similar situation. What was one of the things that you say, you know what? If I ever get me some money, I'm going to get this. And when you got that money, you got that. Yeah. Uh, shoot, first thing I did was I, I, I built my mom a house. Okay. Because I knew at the end of the day, boy, listen, all this money run out, I got somewhere to I got stay. somewhere I to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to get, you got to get mom a grand in place. <laughs> I go, hey, well, listen, push come to shove. I go on back in that back room, Granny. <laughs> exactly. Listen, I bought, I, I built my mom my house, and I built a special stair, staircase, stairway up to my room. I had a, I built a room just for me in that house. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> what was your worst, what was the worst thing? you like, you wanted it, and then you like, you got it, and you like, man, what the hell was I thinking getting this? Man, a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't nobody know it, but hey, listen, I got a motorcycle my second year in the league, man. Snuck it. I had it in the garage. Me and two other teammates, I ain't going to say no name because I don't want to get nobody in trouble, but really they can't do nothing right now because we ain't get hurt or nothing. But I bought a motorcycle, man, and listen, I used to set my alarm for like 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Straight to the highway. On, on. <laughs> I was just, I was adrenaline, man. I just love speed, man. Right. You all, did you always like want two. a motorcycle when you were young? Yeah, because that's all we did. In, in the neighborhood I grew up in, they all, everybody had dirt bikes, go, go car, right. you know, four wheelers. Right. So I, I, I said, bro, if I get some money, I'm finna get me a dirt bike or a four wheeler, a motorcycle or something. You mentioned that, but Lovey, yeah. you, to, back to the field, you mentioned that Lovey, Lovey Smith, your head coach at the time said, Devin, they're not kicking the ball to you. We need to find a way to make sure that you get an opportunity to get the ball. So he says, you know what? Would you be probably ask you, like, would you be interested in trying to get wide receiver? What was the most difficult thing? Because as you mentioned, you were mainly just catching punts in the bubble, catching kickoffs in the bubble, and then when practice was almost over, you go back out there. So what was the toughest part about transitioning? Because playing college wide receiver is one thing. Playing wide receiver in the NFL right. is a totally different ball game. It, it, it's totally different. The PC people don't don't know that. Like, if you haven't played the game of football, then you don't know how. You just think you could just transition over the sun. That's like Tebow trying to transition tight end. Like you, you, you gotta be, you gotta be doing this stuff since Pop Warner, man. You gotta, at least high school, right? You know what I mean. So I didn't play no no wide receiver in, in high school or Pop Warner, and, and maybe two games in college. That's all I played wide receiver. So. Me going over to wide receiver was like me transferring over to playing hockey. Right. I had no clue where to line up at. Right. You know what I mean? I ain't know two yards split outside the number is what you run when you line up when you run the curl route. These yeah. are the things that people do. They learn this in, in high school. Like right. I had to learn the basics of wide receiver. So me trying to do that at the highest level of football, you know what I mean? I was out there. My head was spinning, man. Right. And then people don't realize, bro, when I when I moved to wide receiver, I went through like out of like eight years, we had like six new offensive coordinators. Right. So I couldn't, for me, trying to figure out where to line up, the other part was learning the playbook. Right. You know what I mean? The basics. Because like I said, out of eight years in Chicago playing wide receiver, we had like six different offensive coordinators. So every year you got new offensive playbook coming in. Right. And you way behind eight. Oh. And, and guys, if people don't understand, it's a different game. They, they putting hands on you in the NFL. They not just letting you run down the field. <laughs> exactly. Now that you're not used to uh, uh, getting all press release and all that, exactly. You know what I mean. I was able to put a little bit because of the, the speed and the talent that I had. But shoot, man, it was a it was a nice dog fight for me out there. You once said Jay Cutler is the worst leader you've ever played with. Why would you say that? I would. I I think just because his leadership. You know what I mean. I I had an uh, interview with this earlier about about three four years ago. 
And what people didn't say, they said what they wanted to say about the situation or uh, how the interview went, but they didn't say the part where I said, to me, out of all the quarterbacks I played with and experience being around, he, to me, Jay Cutler had the, he had the knowledge of the game was better than anybody. His arm strength for the game was better than anybody. His accuracy was better than anybody I ever played with. Like all the tools athletic wise, he was an athletic quarterback. People don't realize it. Jay can shake, Jay can run, Jay can play basketball, Jay can do everything. Right. It's just the leadership he lacked. And that's why, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? People judge him off what he is right now because the leadership, he just didn't know how to associate with the player. He didn't know how to bond everybody together and be that that leader that a quarterback is. Why when it comes to vocal and Pick, you know, picking everybody's right. spirit up when they being down or you need somebody, you know what I mean? Like quarterback should be that guy that, that gives you confidence. Right. That's what he lacked. It seems to me from the outside looking in, and it might not be true, but he looked like a guy that didn't love the game of football. And if you don't, there, I'm sure there have been guys, but you got to fool them. Those guys in the locker room that are around you every day, Dev, you know this, you can't fool them. Now, they might can fool the media. They might can fool the fans right. because the media only gets access to you 30 minutes a day. The fans only see you on television right. if they come to the stadium. But when you're around a guy nine, ten hours a day, six, seven days a week, three, four, five, mm -hmm. ten years, that guy, the guys know you. And you can't fool them. Right. You can't fool them. You can't fool your teammates. You can fool a lot of other people, but you can't fool them. Right. Yeah. I would say he didn't. I, 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 to be honest, I felt like he loved the game, but mm -hmm. like I say, I, I don't know how he was raised. Right. But he is like he was. He's like standoffish. Like he's like was the only kid in the house. You right. know what I mean? Like okay. if you have kids, you don't have. He didn't have no friends. So right. I don't know what it was, but he didn't never open up right. to nobody. But he may have like one, two guys that he talked to. Right. And other than that, he he singled out himself, himself away from everybody. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it was hard. You right. know what I mean for a court, for for you know offense to listen and 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 and, and right. bind in with him because he just kept himself away from everybody, man, and wasn't wasn't friendly about it. But his relationship, he knew Brandon Marshall from Denver, mm -hmm. and he threw Brandon a lot of balls when he was in Denver. Brandon comes to Chicago, he throws him even more balls. Did you feel that had some uh, 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 impact? Oh yeah, most definitely. That, that that relationship they had, man, it was it was like they had a relationship where what I can say, it was almost like brothers. You right. know what I mean? They um, he was Jay was used to Brandon Marshall, the, the type of ways he was. Um, he was, I think they was, Jay was a little afraid of Brandon. They were getting arguments in practice and B. Marshall wouldn't get a certain amount of balls in practice and he would go off on Jay and they would sit there and argue back and forth and cause a big scene. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Me and, me and Julie Pepper had a bet in practice one day, you know, because all I did at that time, I was just doing kickoff and punt return. So I'm, in, I'm on the defense sideline watching. And um, I said, Julius, you want to make a bet? So he looked at me, you know, Julie kind of quiet. He looked at me, what's up here? I said, listen, if Jay Cutler throw Brandon and Marshall the ball, because I already, I seen him arguing before practice. Right. So I already knew what time was. Jay was going him the ball the whole practice. I said, if Jay throw B. Marshall the ball, I give you $100 every time he throwing the ball, right? No, I said, you, no, 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 no. I said, if he don't, no, I said, Drew, if Jay throw B. Marshall the ball, you got to give me $50. Right. Mm -hmm. If he don't throw it to be Marsh, I give you a hundred dollars. So now you got the upper hand. Right. If he don't throw it to be Marsh, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars. But every time he throw it to be Marsh, you gotta give me fifty dollars. He looked at me, he said, "Okay, I like that bet." Bet this jugger threw it to be Marsh over twenty times in a row. <laughs> it, it, it got to the point where the whole like downstairs height, the receiver to the other side didn't even run a route. We just looking. He just looking at B Marsh. B Marsh ain't even open. Ten seconds go by. He threw it to him. Oh, this ten, this like really ten seconds. I ain't saying like over exaggerate. Right. Like jammed up. He covered. He coming back to the B Mark threw it to him. Like it got to the point where we looking at the coach like, are y'all really letting this go on? Y'all really not gonna say anything, huh? Y'all just gonna let this happen. 
y'all just gonna let this happen. And it went one of the moments where him and B. Marshall got into it before practice, and that's how practice went. So it's almost like B. Marshall was doing that on purpose, getting get an argument, knowing that Jay gonna feed him. He gonna feed him. He gonna feed him. <laughs> you played with Matt Ryan. You went to Atlanta, played with Matt Ryan, Julio. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you think? What do you think of their combination? Play with Jay and Matt. B. Marsh, Matt Ryan, and Julio. What do you who had the better combination? I think I think Matt had the better combination with Julio because the both of them they had that mentality where they had issues, right? With right. B. Marsh getting mad, he ain't getting a certain amount of ball. Julio won fight. Julio was fine. As long as we win the game, you know what I mean? I know sometimes I'm gonna get double covered. I need some of these other receivers to eat. So next game, I can get, get my shot. Right. B. Marshall was the type where I don't care if I get double covered. You better throw me the ball. Right. And then Jay had his innocent the way he was and would would just open himself up with people. And then Matt was a person, Matt Ryan was a person, he didn't give a damn who to throw, he was, who he threw the ball to. I'm gonna take what the defense give me. Right. So that's why when I got to Atlanta, like, shoot, I had to split reps with the slot receiver. Me and Harry Douglas was splitting reps. And both of us had over 600 yards that year. Right. So imagine if one of us would have just been playing, we would have easily had over 1,200 yards just right. in the slot position, the third mm-hmm. receiver. Right. Because he was the type of quarterback. Well, I'm, I'm going to throw it to what they give me. So what do you think Julio's going to do? Obviously, he's no longer in Atlanta. It was a big situation. Um, he no longer wanted to be there. He felt Well, he felt like they didn't want him there. They felt he didn't want to be there. What do you expect from Julio in Tennessee this year? I, I, it, it, it's hard to say because you sit down and watch the game, you know what I mean? And he, I don't think he's getting them targets like he was in Atlanta, you know what I mean? And then you got your other receiver, Jones, A.J. AJ Brown. Brown, he hurt. He hurt right now too, man. So I was ho- I thought that Julio was gonna get off this year, especially with him having Derrick Henry. Them they have yes. they on um, they gotta drop that eight guy down to stop to stop that run. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta gotta start you gotta stack the box with him and now, nah, man. I mean, like everybody's kind of disappointed and surprised about that situation over there. They just everybody thought both of them receivers were gonna get off this year. Let's go to Chicago. The situation that they have going on now. They've been they they haven't been they've gone to the playoffs a couple of times, but they're not what we expect the Bears to be. They got a situation where they signed Andy Dalton in free agency. Uh, they ju- they trade up the draft Justin Fields, and they have a former Super Bowl MVP on the roster, Nick Foles. How do, do you think they're handling this situation correctly? Who do you believe should be playing? Say that one more time. Sorry about that. Say that one more time. Look at the Chicago Bears situation at the quarterback situation. You gotcha. signed Andy Dalton in free agency in the offseason. You trade up in the draft uh-huh. to get Justin Fields. You also have a former Super Bowl MVP and Nick Foles on your roster. Now, right. you're looking at the offensive line. It isn't very good. Uh, mm-hmm. You got, I like Robinson. I like Robinson. He's okay. You got tight end, got Jimmy Graham, who's at the tail end of his career. You got Komet, uh, is all, who's a very good tight end. Of the three quarterbacks, who do you believe should be starting right now? Justin Fields, Andy Dalton, or Nick Foles? It, 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 it's tough, you know what I mean, um, with that situation, man. Because for one, you, you put too many quarterbacks in one pot. You know right. what I mean? You got to pick one and then have the other one be really, really true backup quarterback. Right. When you bring you bring in two quarterbacks that have potentially showed that they're they're starting, starting quarterbacks in the league, and then you move up and draft your first draft pick, a high drive pick and a quarterback. Right. It's like, it's like putting a cat in the, in a room with with six pit bulls. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it ain't gonna be pretty in there. You know what I mean? So that situation there, it 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 it, it, it caused a controversy. You know what I mean? From the start. Right. And so like now you you have the fans that have their favorites. You know what I mean? So right. when you go to a preseason game, you get Nick Foles coming up and he throw a pass to the running back. And they want to see a pad down the field and the running back catch the ball and they steady booing him. Right. So how you think he feels? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then you got Dalton and then you got the fans, which is a, a seem like they love feels better. Right. So now as a coach, you don't really know what to do. You know what I mean? And then you play, you, you throw fields in there against a defense that, that just pin their ear back and say, we're going to rush, rush him all game. Right. And now he have a terrible game where he give up nine and a half sacks. 
And you know, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Now, now you stuck. Right. Like as a head coach, I don't want no quarterback controversy. Like, let that be like training camp first week or second week. But after that, I need my locked in quarterback. I don't want nobody battling for quarterback. Right. Spice Adam, you play <laughs> Spice Adams was a teammate of yours. And we know uh-huh. he's an internet sensation now. Was he like that in the locker room like he is now? Yeah. Yeah, he double A. What you see with double A is it's how he is. Double A don't put on no show for nobody. That's just how he is. He always been like that. Whatever you see when he put on these videos and stuff, <laughs> that's just the person he is. Like commute certain comedians, they gotta act to be comedians. Right. And then there's certain certain ones that just talent, that's who they they really is. So they know they're not putting on a show. That's how double A was. He was like that in the locker room, on the field at practice, every single time you met seen double A. He was making people laugh. Why did you wear the number 23? I wore 23 because that was the number I was given in high school. I was given, well, my freshman year, I, was, I played varsity football my freshman year. And so I couldn't get a single digit. You know what I mean? Because all the seniors and juniors, they got single digits. <laughs> they got, yeah, see you but get the first dib on the single digits. The first the crazy thing about it was I really got number seven. Okay. But the old head, that was a, he, was a, he was a senior. And he wore number seven on JV. So he moved up to the scene and he looked at me here like, yo, yo, Rook, I know Coach gave that seven, but I need that seven. And I was like, dang, bro, here you go, bro. <laughs> I had to go back up to the counter. I said, Coach, man, y'all got another number back there for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, he said, you got 23, get yeah, here. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, I say, listen, man, the number don't make you, you make the number. And I just stuck with it. Well, you know in Chicago, if you got the number 23, you know what that you know what that is. So in other words, you're trying to say you, you, you the Jordan of Returners. I gotta be the Jordan of Return. <laughs> <laughs> it's good luck in Chicago when you were 23, man. When when you look around today and you look at some of the returners today, and even though they don't return the ball, uh Cordero is still still is still in it doing that, because I think he was in the league when you was when you were in the league and uh he was at Minnesota right. when you was at Chicago. When you look at some of the guys as far as explosiveness, you look at Lamar Jackson, you look at Kyler Murray, you look at uh, Tyreek. Are do you wish you could have played in an era like this as a wide receiver with this, with so much space and all the rule changes? Yeah. With you can't hit the defensive receiver and the five yard illegal contact and they can't attack the quarterback. Listen, man, right now. All the old heads that played National Football League back in the day, I already mad about these pay grades. You know what I mean? We get paid peanuts for what these boys are making. Right, they That's make the big one thing. They making big boy money, man. And then you know what I mean with the offense. It just seems so much easier now, man. It is. It's so much easier now. Like we we not running these old fashioned plays, now, nah, man. Everything like the way the offense coordinated. All these offense coordinators are young minded, young guys, man, and they they coming up with great schemes to get guys open, man. If I say, if you were the punt returner and kick returner, I mean, you see C.D. Lamb now, he returns some punts. Uh-huh. But most guys, once the guy get established on the offensive side or the defensive side, right. they move away from the returning game. Um, I remember, yeah. you, you, probably, uh, you probably don't remember this guy, but Roy Green, he was a tremendous returner and a wide receiver. But once he got really good at wide receiver, he moved away. Uh, Tyreek is a prime example. Right. Even D. Jack. Right. Once they got right. really good on offense, they're like, nah, y'all need to stay away from this. Do you yeah. do you do you do you think that's a good do you do you like that or do you just like, man, they still got value back there? But I think it just for me, from my perspective, is that it seems like the 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 teams are like, you're too valuable on offense for us to risk it. There's a greater chance you're gonna get dinged on punt return or kickoff return than you are on offense. Yeah, I, I, I think it does play a fact because I can remember like my fourth year in the league where I was two years in the system. So I started getting comfortable with the play calling. You know what I mean? We were two years in with the same offensive coordinator. So I started getting comfortable with the play calling where I can go out there and listen to half of the play and break the huddle. You know what I mean? Know what I got to do. Right. And trying to do both of them and being a full time receiver, like it's impossible. Okay. Like it's impossible. Like I was at the point where I was, when I was full time wide receiver, I was praying that they didn't kick it to me because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have no juice in the legs, man. Right. So 
I I don't care how hard you train in all season, man. When you out there with them them flying bullets, man, you you running, man. And so that second, that middle of that second, third, fourth quarter, man, when you don't rent no huddle, man, and you don't went on the go route twice and nine, you turn around defense three and nine, it's punt return called up. You ain't got no juice in them legs, man. So I don't it's it's impossible to do it, man. I'm looking at this. You've had something that I don't know if anybody else has ever had. You had a perfect speed rating of 100 in 2008, making you the fastest player in the game. I don't know if it, there have been a lot of 99s, and that seems to be the standard now. You get to 99. Travis Kelsey is a 99. Right. Patrick Mahomes is a 99. Uh, Jalen Ramsey is a 99. Aaron Donald is a 99. We've had players 99. I don't know if we've ever had a player with a 100. So when you think about yeah, like, that. man, everybody love Madden. You guys love Madden. But how many of y'all had yeah. that hundred? I had that hundred. Yeah, that 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 that's a lot of kids grow up now. That's what they know me from. You the <laughs> only guy on man that had hundred speed. You know what I mean? That's where all my popularity come from. That mad game with me being the first guy to have a hundred. That was to be honest. That was a, a big accomplishment and a lot of respect from Matt. And you know what I mean for feeling like I should should get the, the hundred. If I took Devin Hester outside right now and said, "Run me a forty, how fast you think you can run it?" Listen, man, last time I tried to sprint, I pulled the hip muscle. I'm scared to sprint right now. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled the hip muscle, shit. I, I'm scared to run. I'm scared to kick it in that field gear. So, so, so I don't know what's going to blow out. So, uh, so, how do you, so how do you stay in shape? You do, you riding the bike, you do an elliptical, you do a little jogging, a little here and there? So, my, my, my middle son plays football. Okay. And so, yeah, I coach, I coach the team. And uh, me going out there to practice and, and running gases with them boys and running through plays. And see, I got eight year olds. So it's like a teacher with, was struggling with a bunch of kids that just don't want, want to listen. So me running around, jumping up and down, yelling and all that. And then I get about three days a week in the weight room. Shoot, my conditioning comes from chasing them little kids and, and, and sprinting with them during the daytime. <laughs> right. The Bears, Chicago, the Bears have the most Hall of Famers. And your first year of eligibility, you talk about some of the all-time greats. You talk about the Buckuses. You talking about Coach Hallis, uh, the owner, the Bears, uh, Gail Sayers, uh, Richard Dent. I mean, Walter Payton, Mike Singletary. The list goes on and on. What would it mean for Devin Hester to all of a sudden? And probably you're gonna have your name up in the stadium. I mean, that's what they do with the greats, the Chicago Bears. The name go up in the stadium. What would that mean to a kid from from Palm Beach, Florida? To all of a sudden, he's a pro football Hall of Famer, and when he go back to to Soldier Field, it look like they're gonna be moving. But when they go, he go back to get that ring, and one day you look up in the stadium and like, wow, my kids looking up there like, man, that's my dad. My dad's name's up there with that Hall of Fame logo next to it. See that, and that's that's the thing. You know what I mean? Like everybody want to be we be remembered, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the only way to be remembered, man, is to, to, to achieve them accolades, man, right. to make that Hall of Fame, you know what I mean? And to have your name up on that stadium, because once that name goes up there, man, and let that building burn down, your name ain't going nowhere. Correct. So it's just like like it's just like getting a degree. Once you get that degree, can't nobody take that from you. Exactly. Right? So once once you get that Hall of Fame, man, man, that's for, for your, hey, that ain't just for you, man, that's for, Representing the name on the back of your jersey, man, for your mom to say, my mom is like my number one fan. Like she brag on me to the point where it embarrasses me when I get around people. <laughs> oh, she, she just so proud of me. You know what I mean? And, I, and it embarrasses me sometimes. Like, mom, come on, mom, chill out, man. Don't tell them that. But it just she just a proud mom. And for me to make that Hall of Fame, man, that's that's my whole family, man. And what we went through, you know what I mean? Right. Like from, from what we talked about in college and all that, man, you know what I mean? Like for me, well, listen, that's it for me. That's all I want right now. I'm gonna give you a choice. You got one choice. Would you rather play DB and pick up Tom Brady or catch a bomb or go rob from Patrick Mahomes? Pick off a pick. Are you pick a big a Brady? Take Brady, take it to the house, and I'm gonna hit the Dion on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it. You got hit the time on it. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hide stuff from the forty on him. 
Are you are you surprised that Tom Brady has been able to play this long and been able to play this well? I mean, you know, we look, normally guys don't play this long, but he's not only playing long, he's playing great. This dude 22 years in. I had to let that thing go at 14. I don't know how long you played there, but I had to let that thing go at 14. Them licks started hurting. Yeah. And that's what I tell people. I say, man, as you get older, those licks hurt. You, I'm right. young. I'm lowering my shoulder. I'm running over. I'm looking for guys to run into. Man, you start getting to year yeah. 12, 13, 14, you like th- turn that blink on. Blink on, blink on. Hit that out of bounds on them. Man, and when it, when you get hit, it last, and, and the injuries last longer, too. Yeah, you don't recover as quick as you once did. Uh-uh, it don't, man. So for Tom, man, there's so much technology going on right now. You don't know what's going on over there, man, with Tom, man. Right. For him to still be playing the way he playing, he 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 got to be spending a couple million dollars on his body. Oh, ain't no question. Something. Yeah, <laughs> he's sleeping, he probably sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber. He might have his whole, his whole house is a hyperbaric chamber. He eating the best food. He got the best chef. He got the best staff, medical staff, physio staff, PT. He got the best of everything. Everything, man. So, hey, and you don't never see them hurt. That's a great thing about it. I can't remember last time Tom Brady was hurt. Right. Well, you know they don't allow you to attack the quarterback like they once did. Now they usually let you blast right. the quarterback, but you can't blast the quarterback. Now they throw the, they're gonna throw the laundry on you. You hit the quarterback too hard. Yeah, but he he don't took a couple of hits and he get right back up. Now it's still quarterbacks out there. Shoot, they getting hurt. I I don't see Tom get hurt. I mean, I know it's the Tom Brady rule, but. <laughs> I don't see him hit a couple of times and he get right back up. Yeah, see, but Tom ain't trying to prove. See, a lot of times guys get in trouble when they try to prove how tough they are. Well, I'm gonna run over this linebacker. Yeah. I'm gonna run over this guy. Tom, like, no, nah, I'm good. Just touch me, yeah. and I'm gonna come back and get you the next play. Exactly, exactly. Tom played baseball for he know how to slide. <laughs> David, man, congratulations on the Hall of Fame. Appreciate you giving me a couple of minutes of your time today, bro. Good luck with the family. Hope all's well on your end, bro. All right, appreciate it, Shannon. Nice talking to you again, man. All right, bro, have a good one. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, 